Welcome back to Theme Park Wizards. Today we're here with Mr. Theron White from E Everything You Need to Know Info, which is a fantastic web website suggesting everything you need to know, especially about theme parks. How are you, Theron? I am doing great today. How about yourself? Oh, absolutely fantastic. So you have your website is um and you also have a segment on Fox 35 Orlando, correct? Like that a little is correct, yes. Uh a show once a week, um, Orlando Parks VIP, and that's with Fox Thirty Five Orlando. So, see, that's pretty. That's pretty cool because, like, so, so, do you do you work for Fox, or is like, is it a an, a partnership, or is like, is it how 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 did you you have that come up with your uh, your website? Um, is it just a passion of yours, or do you work in journalism? How's that? How does that all, how does that all work? That guide, you know. So yeah, uh, it, it is a partnership. So I don't directly work for Fox. Uh, it was one of those things where for my previous job, I had been able to talk to news sometimes, whether in station or being able to zoom in. And then once I started EYNTK, I decided I was going to keep doing that. I think it was very important to be able to talk to those companies and kind of get the voice out there. And also, I mean, isn't it fun to talk on the news? So yes. after a long enough time of being able to talk to them and going back to back and forth, uh, one of their executive producers, Zach, reached out to me and he said, look, we have this idea for a show. We don't know what you think. Would you be interested in doing this? And I loved it. And I sent back some ideas that I had. They liked my ideas. I liked theirs. It worked out. And then we've been doing that now for about three and a half months. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a fairly new show. That's pretty cool. Yes. Man. So yesterday you went to... Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. How was it? What was your favorite house? And and what did, did they exceed your expectations? As with every year, uh, I love Halloween Horror Nights, and I always say that they exceed my expectations. They almost sometimes don't because my expectations are so high because I know <laughs> that I'm going to love Horror Nights. I joke and say that they should just have a direct deposit to my bank account because the second <laughs> the frequent fear passes come out. Uh, I'm going to buy it. I buy it the first day. I don't even look at I just go here, just take it. I know this is what I'm going to get. I know I'm going to go multiple times. Uh, so I really did enjoy it. I didn't get to go into a ton of houses last night because I knew some people working the event. I was trying very specifically on the first night to see them in their mm -hmm. houses and their scare zones. So they only got to do three. Um, I did Ghostbusters, A Quiet mm -hmm. Place, and then Triplets of Terror. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved all three. I'm a big, big fan of the Quiet Place movies, so that was my favorite of those three. But I've got a lot more to check out. I'll be checking them out again tonight and then tomorrow on Sunday as well. So the Quiet Place is very interesting because now it's supposed to be quiet. So from some sort of video I saw, so there's not really any music, but there's these atmospheric soundtracks, I guess. How was that? And, and how was the sign language aspect of that house? So I ended up going through the house twice. The first time I went through, I actually didn't notice any of the sign language. I think it's just because I was so wrapped up into it. But the yeah. second time, it was a lot more obvious. And yes, uh, there's no real music in the house. There's just like hums and tones and things going in the back. It it was interesting. One of my favorite parts is right before you go in, there was this really interactive um, security team member. And he was like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, hey, guys, you're heading in. He just kept saying, shh quiet and i loved it because <laughs> the crowds were actually listening people were going into the house and it was generally quiet by the time he got to the end people were very very scared and then there was a lot of screaming going on but mm -hmm. at the beginning people really did listen and they were being quiet it was very interesting to see that in a horror night's house yeah i feel like i feel like that'd be pretty eerie you know even just like a big line of people just like being super quiet being quiet get, like, yeah drop. <laughs> that's like that's kind of crazy and it's pretty good they're listening because i feel like the house is better when you know then the audience participation is you know better Absolutely. too is if someone is like you know screaming and then it just kind of takes yeah a little bit out of it but so yeah seven more houses go through this weekend wow which ones are most anticipated based on what you've heard and based on what you you saw just from the announcements of the seven you have left so this marks 10 years of me going to Halloween Horror Nights. I started in 2014. Um, my sister and I went and we were just going to go for one night. We ended up loving it so much that we ended up upgrading our single day tickets to a multi-day pass. And throughout the years, I've had a lot of favorites, but my all-time favorite was Slaughter Cinema, the original from a couple of years ago. So I know mm -hmm. Slaughter Cinema too. I'm, I'm just guaranteeing that's going to be my favorite and I've heard a lot of good things. I'm expecting that's going to be my favorite and that's one of my top goals tonight is to be able to go and check that one out. <laughs> Yeah, that seems pretty cool. Um, it's, and again, I haven't been to Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando, or actually Orlando, Universal Orlando in general. But um, that one, I'm. It seems like 
each scene is like a different movie, right? Is it making not making fun of, but is it like a parody of a different movie, or is it their own movies? How is what is like the storyline of the Slaughter Cinema houses? That reasoning is exactly why I like the houses so much is every room you go into is supposed to be another like 80s film. So they're not real oh. films. They're just fake ones. But mm -hmm. it's basically poorly made 70s and 80s films. And they're kind of joking at the concept of those like cult classic films that really aren't that good. But they, we've watched them so many times that they just become mm -hmm. fan favorites. So one of the originals that they had was Barber Chop. And it is an evil <laughs> murderer that's basically using his equipment to go and kill people. And so in that sense, like that wouldn't be a full house, but getting its own room inside of this house made it great. And I mm -hmm. really like that because we get those really special concepts that might not be able to make a massive house or have a massive budget, but you go into this house and again and again and again, you're getting different concepts, different storylines, and you get that room with such a lot of detail and such a lot of story for a specific little space. And I think it lets those like fun, weird ideas really thrive. And that is why I've really, really enjoyed the original and why I think I'm going to love this one as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool because I think uh, at least on the, the promotional art here, it looks like this one's going to feature a drive-in movie, which is pretty cool because um, that's, that's pretty awesome. Is it the same? Do we know if it's the same like decades from the first one or is it like, like 90s, 2000s movies now? That I'm aware of is still the 70s and 80s. Um, and for you saying the drive-in theater part, when I was waiting to see A Quiet Place, I was walking back and forth and back and forth and all the switchbacks. Um, they have their advertisements that they like to show. And they were actually talking about that one, how it's the Carrie drive-in. And they really portrayed it as if it was a drive-in movie. They didn't even mention really that it was a haunted house in this like fake mm -hmm. in-park advertisement. They were saying, hey, we've got this limited time movie on the other side of the park. Come check it out. And so I thought that was a really Ooh, cool way to cool. build the storyline up. Yeah, that's nice. That's that was real nice, man. And so you said you actually mentioned switchbacks. How were the crowds and wait times last night? Was it? Uh, I assume it was a sold out night. Was it? Was it? Were the lines long? Was it? Uh, was it popular? Uh, was it? Were they too long? Or did, how was that? Does it work? So as expected, it was slammed. Uh, but one of the things that I think was really nice is it didn't rain, which is normally Florida's like curse is that it rained the first night of every year. Uh, it didn't rain. It did earlier in the day and it was pouring at like one or two o'clock. And I cleared think up that in really time. Helped. Huh? Yes, exactly. It was raining and I was like, go get it out now. Like finish, <laughs> finish the rain now. Uh, so it was nice that it, it was actually an incredibly nice evening last night. It was not that hot. It never got really above 90 degrees. And then as soon as the sun set, it stayed in the low 80s. There was a breeze. It was definitely busy. I mean, there was two, three hour long lines for some of the major houses, but it wasn't anything that I thought was like absurd. And in that sense, it made for a really nice evening. Like, yeah, I had a long line, but it wasn't crazy. They were moving the lines really quick uh, and the entertainment was out there. Everyone was really excited. And because there wasn't rain, the scare zones were actually at a hundred percent. Like people were really able to go for it and that made it for a nice evening. Oh, see, that's, that's really nice. Now I'm curious um, because here in Hollywood, I'd say for the last, just last year and you know, going forward this year, I feel like uh, in Hollywood, you need to have either the early entry ticket um, for the extra $10 or the express pass if you like have one night and and you just have to do all the houses. Is it like that in Florida too, where like if you recommend someone's going like one time and they have just one night but they want to get every single house done, do you recommend do you recommend they get an express pass or can you do that just regular GI ticket or early? Do they, I don't know if you guys have early entry st uh, style stuff, but can you do that without the express pass that over in Orlando? Yeah, so I think it's possible. It would have been extremely difficult last night. I do know that some people were able to get all 10 in last night, but you had to be on a mission. We also have an early admission pass, but ours is $50. And it only lets you in for basically you get to go into the park for two hours and then you get to do like a stay and scream area. I personally don't know if that $50 would be worth it unless you really wanted to make sure that you got that extra time in. It used to be about $30 and that's when I would use, I would tell people that it was like worth your money. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get express and of course that's going to help a lot. But last night, if you were on a mission, you could have done it. And if you're going later on in the season, if you're there on a Wednesday or a Thursday, I think it is 100% possible to do all 10 houses and enjoy the scare zones without having to have express. Of course, express is a really nice uh, benefit though. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So the stay and scream, so I've heard about this. The, for the stay and scream, do certain, so do you just get to wait there and be first or do certain houses also open up earlier than the actual time? 
So they'll sometimes open about 10, 15 minutes early. I don't think it's really planned for them to open early. It's more like, hey, all of our characters are ready. Like, let's just go. Uh, basically, you do get to get into one house really, really fast. And it's usually mm -hmm. some of the bigger houses. So like the Insidious, Ghostbusters, uh, A Quiet Place, all of them, you get to line up early and it's usually in the shade. Some people go and do it over in the New York area. And so you don't really have to stand with the thousands of people at the gate in the sunlight. It is nice that you can kind of relax and maybe grab a drink at Finnegan's while you're waiting or a snack. And so in that sense, I love Stay and Scream as an annual pass holder to Universal. That's usually the way that I do it if I'm going to go there. Because after I've seen the, the show at the gate once, I'm like, I got it. I'd <laughs> rather relax and take my time for the rest of it. But it is a nice uh, perk if that is something someone's going to do to be able to just kind of chill. And you will get into one of those like major, major houses in usually less than 20 minutes. Interesting. Okay, so wow. So it actually works super different out here. I don't know. Are you familiar with Universal Hollywood or Halloween Hornets Hollywood? I'm aware of it. I haven't done it yet, and I definitely want to check it out soon, but I have not done it in person yet. Yeah, okay. So it's interesting because for our, our early answer, well, for one, it was only last year that they started like charging. It used to be like free. You can just show up. Mm. And now it's $10. But our early entry is very interesting. The event starts at 7 here. But they open up the – if you have the entry ticket, they, they can come in at 5. And then at, you can mm. go to the lower lot. The, the, all the lower lot mazes open up at 5.30. So you can have a chance to like kill half of the mazes before the official event starts, which is pretty cool. And this is why um, I always – First time it's recommended because it's extra 10 bucks. It used to be free, but extra 10 bucks. Get all the lower lot houses done, which is four of them. That's half of us, half of ours. You come back up and then you can do the other four and watch the shows and stuff and still stay till two in the morning. So it's very interesting how it seems to work very different over there in Orlando. I had actually had no idea. It's, it's good to know. Good to know. Hmm. Well, being able to do those four for ten dollars, yeah, I would say that's a no brainer. That's that's a great deal. <laughs> yeah, see, I, th I wow. Man, wow, so Orlando's really different. Maybe, I guess, hmm, that's, I'm trying to think why, but I guess, I guess, it, well, I guess ours is, it's, I don't know, the lower lots can lie far away because you have to go down the escalator. So maybe it's easy way to separate all the people. Maybe it's logistically easier. But yeah, Halloween Horn Nights Hog, pretty good. I know Orlando's usually the better one, but I feel like Hollywood has a, pretty stepped up their game the past couple of years. So I'm excited for you to come out and uh, check it out one of these years. I feel like it's getting better and better every single year. So you're coming in at a good, you'll be coming in at a good time. I definitely want to check out the terror tram as well. Oh yes. Like this year, it seems to be getting um, like more enhancements. There's like actual, usually you should walk around and walk on the sets. It's mostly outdoors, but th this year, from the construction, it looks like there's a lot more indoor scenes. So I'm very excited to see uh, what mm. that's about because that's it's like something new. It's, we've never had that before. But Insidious out in Orlando, see, over here in Hollywood, I'm I loved in 2022, and I'm not sure how you felt about it in Orlando, but I loved the Weekend House. That was like one of my all-time favorite houses because I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the Weekend. But I, I was like, how they? I was confused because I was like, how are they gonna do a musical? Yes, like an house. Does I remember before the pandemic shut everything down, Billy Eilish was like rumored to be in Hollywood. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, how are you gonna do a Billy Eilish house? First, I, th I was confused. I thought she was performing. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, oh no, it's an actual house. And then I never could see it. And I was like, okay, the weekend. I'm like, ah, oh, how are they gonna do this? And I was like, oh, and I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, I was walking into a music video. That was so cool. So he's back. So I'm excited for. Him. This uh, the weekend on Tuesday to see what that's about. But after hearing the insidious stuff, people seem to really like that one. It seems very intense. That's kind of rising up on my list here. I hope it's as good out here in Orlando uh, here as it is in Orlando. Have you heard great things about insidious from your your friends or from social media? Oh yeah, I've seen a ton of people saying that Insidious is their scariest house of the year and they're saying they're pretty horrified. Of ev everyone I know, of all friends and social media, I've only seen one person that didn't like it that much. So maybe they were an outlier, maybe they didn't get mm -hmm. the scares at the right time. But overall, yes, I have heard very, very positive things. And to throw back to you saying The weekend, 
I loved the weekend's house a couple of years ago. That mm -hmm. was my favorite house of the year. And I actually listened to the music mm -hmm. from that house so often that like my Apple top listen to of the year, <laughs> my top three songs were all the weekend from that album. Like mm -hmm. it worked for universal and it worked for the weekend to get his advertising in because mm -hmm. I, that house was fun. It, it had its scary elements, but really, like you said, it was like a music video. You got to go through and jam to the music and just have fun while you were, while you were going through the haunted house. And I think that's such a win for, for all the people who were involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, like you, I am, uh, I, I obviously I know some of the weekend's music, but I actually after being in the queue so many times and hearing the same songs, and I was like, oh, I really like this. I actually yes, I downloaded the entire album on the phone, and I still listen to it to this day. I was like, oh, it worked, it worked, it worked. And it did. his tour in LA was going on at the time, and I was like, man, I wanted to go after going to the house. I'm like, I want to go, but it was sold out. I'm like, oh, the weekend, you really, really did a number on me there. But so I'm excited for it because it's uh, the, the whole trilogy. I'm excited to see how what music they incorporate and what I guess it'll be like different scenes from different music videos throughout his entire album, which should be pretty, pretty cool. And I'm very uh, oh, I just I can't wait. But it was also pretty cool about Hollywood this year is that for the like the first time ever, oh, at least that I know, the Universal Monsters made Eternal Bloodlines. It's gonna get is going to be set in the sound stage where the very first monsters movie was made, which is like so cool. That's like, a cool I one. feel like you know, not many people may know that, but for the people that do, it's like pretty like historic, you know, like like that's so cool. So I'm excited about that one. The monsters maze out here in Hollywood never get that long of a wait. I don't know why. I don't know if it's people just, it's not an IP, so people don't, don't want to go in it. But I feel like they never get higher than 30 to 45 minutes. How do the Monsters Houses perform out in Orlando? Are they always on the lower side um, or are they very popular in, in terms of wait times? It's funny. At the beginning of the event, they usually will have a shorter wait because, like you said, it's not an IP house. People have specific ones they're going for, but they do such a good job on the monster houses every single year here that about halfway through the season, they end up getting slammed because everyone hears about how great they are. The pass holders mm -hmm. become obsessed with it, you know, and everyone just goes and they're like, look, you've got to check this house out because they're usually genuinely pretty scary. And they've got a fun, unique storyline. I think that's what really sells people in. And Universal's done a really good job about that with building up these classic monsters and getting people excited about them again. And then, of course, coming soon with Epic Universe for Dark Universe. You know, they're, they're really doing a good job at building the idea of Universal's classic monsters back up. And I think that's one of those things that I didn't see too long of a wait for it last night. I think it was about an hour, which was slightly under the average for like the big, big houses. But it won't take long for people to learn that that's, you know, it's a big and it's a scary house. Yeah, because usually, like even here in Hollywood, those are those are pretty, uh, pretty well thought out mazes. They're pretty creative. I like um, pretty good stuff. And this year, curious because you know it's all all female, so eternal bloodlines. That sounds sounds pretty pretty interesting. Curious about that here. And and you guys have the Death Eaters this year. Uh, we don't have the Death. I don't know why we don't have the Death Eaters this year. I like those, but. As, you guys usually have the Death Eaters in Halloween Horror Nights, yes? Or is that a uh, new Last year was our first time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And and this is, I assume, they just hang out in Diagon Alley area, correct? Yeah, they hang out in Diagon Alley. Uh, last year, they came actually out into the streets slightly, like they just mm -hmm. barely outside of the facade for Diagon Alley. Mm -hmm. But they are such a great addition. I think it's very interesting. I don't know any of this for sure. I just have heard this as a rumor, but they always start one of their sets during the actual park day before horror nights actually starts so i mm -hmm. don't know if that's like a weird legality thing because there's like scare zones and then they're not considered a scare zone and for mm -hmm. years people were saying that the reason that harry potter and all that area couldn't get scary is because of jk rowling was like you can't put it in horror nights so one of the rumors i heard for a while now is that people are like well they're not part of horror nights they're part of regular day operations that's why it starts when the park is open and then it just happens mm -hmm. to keep going I don't know if that's what it really is or if they found some loophole or if it's just nice to offer it to guests. But I think that is a funny aspect that they are the only scare zone that is operating during the day for day guests. So you can see it without a Horror Nights ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Over here, yeah, they didn't refer to them as a uh, you know, scare zone either. They called them I think, like an activation or something. Yeah, um, they get like this but... weird name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which works for me. I don't care what it is. It was pretty good, but um, I wish. And it's funny because yeah, they... They appeared here in Hornets. 
couple years ago. Then they appeared in the summertime, and then they put their summertime and Horn Eyes in the summertime. But now, now they didn't come during the summer or Horn Eyes. So <laughs> I guess maybe that was a little cut. But I hope they come back because that they're pretty cool. Especially it's funny during the summertime we here. They did all their tricks like the into the their special effects with the magic of the wands and they did uh spells. But then during Horn Eyes, they'd be more of kind of like a they'd stand on these boxes and they kind of just guide people towards the other houses and just kind of stand there. I'm, and it's interesting how they, they didn't do the, the, the wand stuff during Horn Eyes, maybe because it was, it was too crowded. But I was like, hmm, do, do Death Eaters over there, do they stand? Do they kind of just stand in one place in the box? Or are they out there like doing like wand spells and stuff like um, ours were in the summertime? Oh, no, they're crazy here. Uh, I was actually blown <laughs> away last year when they did it for the first time. I was like, oh, you know, maybe they're going to be up on the boxes. Like, we'll see what they do. And I walked in, and I had a wand about this close to my face. And I said, oh, <laughs> so they can get very close to you. They will – some of them are like six foot four six foot five Ooh, six foot actors and they will just storm through a crowd and i was blown away about how close they'll get to people and how much they'll do they'll throw wands at people they'll they'll like get to each other they do go on their boxes and they do have like show moments that's kind of how they start and they end every mm -hmm. time they're like 30-ish minute long sets but during the middle they have no problem getting in people's faces and i think that that was something that people weren't expecting and i think that's what makes them so effective and why, what gets people excited for them? Yeah, that seems super cool. Like, man, I, that's, that's so for uh, they're so precise how they don't like accidentally like, hit somebody. Like you said, it's right next yeah. to your face, but they, like, they know exactly where to like go, which is so cool. Um, a lot of people like, I feel like they don't think about that. They just think, oh, they just like this person with a wand, but no, they have to like make sure they don't hit you, but still get super close. Yes. To you. I feel like that's kind of difficult. And, and, Speaking of the Death Eaters and Wands, yes, you mentioned Epic Universe is coming. You must be stoked for this park. It's coming to Orlando, of course, in 2025 with a brand new Harry Potter area. What are your thoughts? What's your most anticipated land, and why is it Dark Universe? <laughs> Dark Universe is definitely up there. I think for the land, like the mm -hmm. vibes of the land, Dark Universe mm -hmm. definitely wins. But one of the ones, and I know it's going to Japan, and I know Super Nintendo World is at some of the other parks. I cannot wait to see the Donkey Kong Minecart Madness ride. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of the ride, the fact that it's jumping off the track, the fact that it's just interactive. People are like, but it's not fast. It doesn't have flips. I'm like, I don't care. This looks like a roller coaster version of like the People Mover, how it's just going in and out of the land. It adds the kinetic energy, and it's very, very accurate to the video game. That is my all-time number one for the rides there. I'm excited about the whole park as a whole. I mean, it looks insane. I've had the opportunity to fly mm. over in a helicopter and kind of check it out from the air and see just how massive it is. And to be able to check that out and just seeing the updates that Universal's been giving, they've done a good job. I, of course, as a fan, want to know everything immediately, but Universal's been doing a good job of being like, here's a little bit of information. We'll be mm. back in a month and we'll give you a little bit more. They've done a really good job of just piecing some of those stuff together and getting us excited month after month after month. Uh, I'm going to try my best to be there day one, but I know I'll be there month one and just go back again and again and again, much like Horror Nights. Like I said, uh, the mm -hmm. second they come out with a pass for that, they can also just direct deposit from <laughs> my bank account because I, I know I'm going to want to be there. Yeah, I definitely plan to be there next year. And yeah, the Dark Universe looks fantastic. Super Nintendo World, I'm excited for um, the Yoshi. Mm -hmm. And Donkey Kong, because you know, we don't have that out here, but the whole land is so cool, even though ours is much smaller. You just walk in and you're just so immersed, like unlike anything Universal's ever done. So the whole park like that would be just super cool. Uh, the drone dragons at above uh Isle of Burke yes. look incredible. I can just sit there all day watching those. And then the Harry Potter ride itself looks like insane. Like it looks super cool. So I think this thing about a smash hit and then um and then obviously we got some other stuff I'm sure coming to the other two parks as well. I'm trying to be a formidable contender to the Orlando theme park market. D23 Disney World announced some um responses or things they already had planned. Who knows what they are? But there's a lot of cool stuff happening there, but also some controversial things like Cars Land and the Rivers of America. What are your personal thoughts on well? Cars Land itself, but then also the placement of where that's going. 
So I love Cars Land over at Disney California Adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big fan of the original Cars film. And so the first time that I walked in there and saw if the town was recreated just exact, uh, I was just so incredibly up? happy. Yeah, it's so good. And the rock work is amazing and the ride. Mm -hmm. I was blown away the first time I saw it. And it's always one of the first places I go whenever I go and visit out to Disney California Adventure. So I love it. The idea of them bringing it to Magic Kingdom, I think the theme is a little off, but in my mind, I think it's the same thing. Like, I also don't think Moana fits too well at Epcot when you think of Yeah, the, that's an odd think, one. <laughs> yes, it would have been way better at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I think mm -hmm. if they had picked up the Journey of Water and just taken exactly what it is and put it at Disney's Animal mm -hmm. Kingdom, it would have been a better fit thematically. That being said, I love the Journey of Water attraction. I think it's a great addition. It's always very popular. I like that there's not a line. Kids mm -hmm. seem to love it and families do too, so that's great. In the same sense, uh, Disney has definitely, I think, taken a step where they're pushing a lay away a little bit from being exact to the themes in some of their lands. So because of that, cars might not be the first thing you'd think of for Frontierland. It's certainly not the first thing I thought of, but I like the idea of the ride. Uh, us being able to go on an off-road rally on these vehicles, going around, it looks like a like, uh, national park, going up in and around some of those mountains. It looks like we might have walking trails around there and really cool spots for photos and waterfalls and rivers. I love the idea of it. It's in definitely a controversial spot. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video with me uh, and Drew, the Disney dude, where we were talking about that. He was very upset about that it's going to be placed in the rivers of America. I get that it's going to be in the rivers of America, and I get that we're losing definitely an integral part of the Magic Kingdom. That being said, I don't think I'm as upset as the rest of the like Disney fandom is that we're losing the river because I think that it can be done right. Uh, I know that people are getting nervous about can Disney execute this correctly. We'll have to say, I don't know, but I think that this can be done right. And like I had said on that thing with Fox is I think Disney is taking the idea of Frontierland and they're just completely mixing the idea of the 1800s. We're not cowboys anymore. We're not. Mm. It's not this. We've got the modern day Country Bear Jamboree. We've got the 1920s with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We're going to have the 1800s with Big Thunder Mountain. And I think we've got the modern era now with the Cars attraction and that expansion. So I think it is the frontier. It's just the United States as we are moving west as a country as a whole. And the timeline itself is pretty much gone. People are going to be upset about that. I get it. But I think that's kind of what they're aiming for. And in that sense, if we're getting rid of this storyline of the cowboy times, it can work if done correctly. I'm going to be very focused in to see how Disney's doing this because this can be messed up quickly and this could become, like people have said, a concrete jungle in what used to be a beautiful river. We'll have to see. Uh, but I am hopeful that we could get a national park, basically a Yellowstone or uh, a Yosemite or something like that in the middle of Magic Kingdom. And it could, could be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely off some optimistic on the execution Especially because of the placement, I feel like Disney knows they have to really like give it their all to really replace uh, almost like with the, uh, Tiana's versus Splash Mountain, how they're like they have to really mm -hmm. knock it out of the park or try to. Um, this is what they're replacing. I do feel like if they executed well, this could be like kind of your guys' version of like Grizzly Peak at California Mansion with the waterfalls yes. and, and, the, and the rivers and I am so glad, though, that you guys aren't getting an exact you know, clone of what we have here in terms of Cars Land, because now you have your own little thing, and you have uh, what seems like even a little more, could be more thrilling attraction, because, you know, you're going up and down these mountains, so there could be some more drops in there, so we could be pretty cool, and um, have a, uh, and I feel like, yeah, it could be kind of, well, I don't know, I'd say it could be kind of weird having a cartoony mountain next to it, but I mean, Tiana was like a cartoony mountain wall. It was, oh, yeah, so I don't think it'll be that crazy. But I think it would be pretty cool. And also, you guys get another mountain. How cool is that? And that nice mm -hmm. addition to the skyline of Magic Kingdom. You have another mountain attraction. Hopefully, they'll have mountain in the name so you can uh, you know, keep, yeah. keep the motif going on there. But my personal favorite, well, also, the Villain's Land. That's actually my favorite. My second favorite is the Monstropolis Door Coaster, but the Villain's Land, you know, obviously we got some very early concept art fleshed out, but you know, well, I'm sure it will change. Two attractions. Are you hyped for that? Do you think it will be better, the same as Dark Universe, or how do you think the Villain's Land is going to work out? And uh, what do you think is kind of going to come there? 
it's funny. Sometimes people I feel like online will get upset that people we compare the parks and we're like, not everything is Disney versus Universal. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say this in a way of like them attacking each other. Mm -hmm. I think that as theme park fans, we always win when they fight. So I exactly. love to see the parks get compared because that means that the Disney and the Universal and the SeaWorld and the Knott's Berry Farm and the Six Flags, as long as the executives are looking going, we need to beat mm -hmm. them, that just wins for us park fans. In the sense, I think Dark Universe was proposed very vague because they are going to be looking at Epic Universe. A lot of these projects they've probably been looking at for years and years and Dark mm -hmm. Universe, you know, who knows how long, or I'm sorry, Villains Land, how long mm -hmm. has that been, uh, you know, in their minds. But mm -hmm. now that Universal has announced Dark Universe, I think that that land is going to be radically changed the second that Universal opens Epic Universe. Disney executives are going to walk into Universal's land and look around and say, this is what I like. This is what I don't, but this is what we can mm -hmm. do. And while they might have an idea for some of their rides right now, I think that's going to be really solidified once they walk into Epic Universe because they're like, look, it's a free testing ground. We get to see the competition mm -hmm. take kind of the gambling part of it. Universal has definitely, I feel like, been for a little bit more of an adult crowd. I mean, it's obviously still, obviously still family and kid friendly, mm -hmm. but they're not afraid to aim for a little bit more of like the teenagers or the older adults where Disney aims a little bit younger. And so they, I think, are taking less of a gamble to go scary, and I'm glad that they're doing that. So now that we've got Universal that I think, or I'm sorry, Disney that is now <laughs> looking at it and they're going to walk in and say, all right, Universal did a genuinely scary ride. They did a spinner coaster here. They've got interactive characters. How can this be done? Uh, and I think it's funny that Universal specifically mentioned that they're going to have walk around entertainment like was promised for Galaxy's Edge here in Florida. And we got some, but <laughs> not to the level at which Disney initially said. Mm -hmm. So I think that our villains land at Magic Kingdom, I'm very, very excited for it. I love the idea of it. I love that concept art and how dark and evil and spooky it is. I think that that can be done fantastic. As you said, we don't have a ton of details about the rides. And I think that once Epic Universe opens, that's when Disney's really going to solidify more of that and we'll hear more. But I'm all for an expansion of the Magic Kingdom where we get some more rides and we get some more areas. And people have been begging for a villains land. So let's see what Disney can do. Yeah, the, that live stream presentation. I am the villain saying got the loudest presentation ever. I mean, from people that were a friend of mine that was there, he said it was so loud that you know the stadium almost shook, which is <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I think it looks great. Or even if it comes like half like that, it looks fantastic. This whole roller coaster thing under the waterfall i hope whatever i know it's a vague concept but, but i hope they keep that because that sounds that looks really cool um <laughs> over there and yeah imagine the walk around characters and like imagine like a massive show like i think they can mm -hmm. really go bonkers with this and i'm i'm super excited but yeah you guys are getting magic kingdom itself is getting what uh four new attractions over the next few years which is yeah it should be nice increase in capacity and also i like how and i know some people may um you know the place may may be controversial with the theme but you know this way whatever for better or for worse this will differentiate the magic kingdom you know, from disneyland you know it won't be just disneyland light you know with some a lot of the same rise this will have like now have a little uh solidified version of its new you know unique attractions with Tron and these guys to really be like a really different theme park, you know? Absolutely. One of my uh, friends, he is a big time Disney fanatic and he's a big time Disney historian. And that's one of the things he's actually talked about a lot is that he loves Magic Kingdom. He's like, but he's like, it's just Disneyland, not as good in some aspects. And so he was actually four when Tron got added and he's actually four villains land. And while he is also upset that we're losing Rivers of America, he's kind of like me where he's hopeful because he's mm -hmm. like, look, it's going to allow Magic Kingdom to kind of get its own thing. He's like, Magic mm -hmm. Kingdom has always been the like mm -hmm. the younger kid, even though it's the way, way bigger park. And mm -hmm. that kid has always been like trying to catch up with like, well, have you seen my ride? And have you seen my fireworks show? And I've got this big resort and look at my hotels. And they're like, but it's always been kind of the same park with just <laughs> modifications. And mm -hmm. so seeing that Disney is continually breaking off from kind of the Disneyland aspect, I think you're right that it is going to be nice that we are getting a vastly, you know, a big change. We're, we're definitely mm -hmm. getting something different uh, for this park that will make it 100% unique away from Disneyland. Yeah, it should be fantastic. And pretty soon, I mean, the promise has been filed and I'm used to in five years, most of this should be done. She'll be like, it's not like it's coming in. No. 
20 years, which I know is like another complaint, but that's yeah. coming pretty soon. So that should be pretty good Like by the, uh, by the start of the next decade, which is cool. And yeah, Disney said within the next five years. So we'll see. They say yeah. end of 2029. Their record in the past five years has not proven that, but it seemed like everything they were saying at D23 was trying to be like, we know, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. let's fix that. So Yeah, it seemed a big apology letter, and I mean – they have filed those early permits, so I'm I'm pretty I'm 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 optimistic. I'm even here for Avengers Campus. They filed some permits already, so I think they're mm -hmm. really trying to trying to you know move it really fast. Um, before we leave the Magic Kingdom, let's uh, have you been on the Disney Drew dude? The he he is Mister Tiana. Um, yes, over he here. Is. Have you been on Tiana's My Adventure as well? Yeah, I've been lucky enough to go on a few times. I still want to be able to do it at night one time, and I haven't gotten that yet. But I have been able to do it during the middle of the day and close to sunset. I really enjoyed the attraction. Uh, to be a completely honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of Splash Mountain. It's not just because of the Splash Mountain theme, but I'm just mm -hmm. not a log flume person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really like going to the parks and getting soaking wet. It's the same thing like when I go over to Islands of Adventure for Universal. I don't ride their water rides too often because oh, yeah, because those I'm are real soakers. Soaking wet. Yes. And so in that sense, I only did Splash Mountain about maybe once or twice a year, even being a pass holder. When we lost it, it wasn't the biggest loss in the world to me. So I was glad when Tiana's was announced that it is going to be the same similar style attraction. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, when it opened, I felt like they did a good job. It's got the same vibes of the previous attraction. We've got cartoony animals, it's music based, mm -hmm. and we got a big drop. So for people that liked that idea of the ride, I think that, you know, you're getting kind of the same attraction. If you were a big fan of Splash Mountain, you love that storyline. Unfortunately, you're going to have to go over to Tokyo now to see that. But for what we got, I mean, I do like it. It does have major problems right now where it seems to go down about every single day. It rarely opens on time. But Star Wars Rise of the Resistance had that same problem. Now it's generally okay. Mm -hmm. um, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure also had those mm -hmm. issues, and now it's okay. So, I mean... It stinks that it's not operating perfectly every single day, but we'll give it the six-month timeline that those other major attractions had. And if after six months it's still not working, then we can start making fun of them for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully they they uh, fix that because yeah, that is kind of very unfortunate that that yeah, that it doesn't open on time. And I'm hoping here in Disneyland uh, that, and I think that I think they are. I think they're taking more. Uh, more time to sort of say to make sure all that all that timing is on point. So hopefully we won't we won't have the same situation here in November and December when it opens here at Disneyland. But I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the changes are. I know Disneyland has an additional scene like our drop is now mm -hmm. enclosed where before it was open. And yeah, you know, we have um you know, just a different layout. So I'm sure I'm excited to see like the little changes between here and Florida's version. And to see which one's better or worse or the same or just unique and different. And also at nighttime, you're right. Um, it should be uh, like a wonderful, wonderfully lit at nighttime. And a whole nice pop of color to that area, which uh, should be pretty cool over there in Bayou Country. So this is interesting. Ours is now Bayou Country. Now, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh is just sitting mm -hmm. there in Bayou Country. Which is, I think that it's funny. I thought, I mean, Critter Country kind of fit. Both rides, in my opinion, because there's a lot of critters, I, I mostly critter face, there. and there's Winnie the Pooh. But kind of signals to me that maybe Winnie the Pooh may not be here for too much, too many more years. If he doesn't even fit in his own land, but we'll have to see um, about that. But at Epcot, or sorry, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, <laughs> Monstropolis is coming, and see, this is my second favorite announcement of the night. For D23, because just the fact for the door coaster and a suspended coaster, I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, man, I've always looked at those different, maybe more extreme coaster types, right? And I'm like, man, if Disney or Universal got their hands on these and really put them in a theme setting, I think these would be really cool. Because, you know, most of you just see them at like Six Flags or SeaWorld, and they're just kind of just open and exposed bare bones themed coasters but i'm like man if disney took one of these and really themed it it could be super cool now they are so i'm super excited for what they can do with this door coaster um i'm pumped what do you think i think it's gonna be amazing and what do you think monster office will be going so i i'm i agree with you there that this is one of those coasters that like i feel like people 
talked about and it was rumored about. And it was one of those that like, yeah, it's a great idea. It'll never happen. And so when they announced it on stage, I was like, oh, okay. And then when they said it was a land, that's what blew my mind is I was like, you're, you're dedicating an entire land to this. So I know people have talked about the Muppets and people have talked about Star Wars launch bay and the animation courtyard. I saw someone on Twitter the night of say that it was replacing rock and roller coaster. And ever since they said that it just, I can't get that out of my mind. You've got Rock and Roller Coaster, this massive show building, and then you have mm -hmm. the launch platform or the launch like area, and then you've got the uh, queue, and it takes up a ton of room. I used to be a cast member. Uh, I worked at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I've been back there. It is an insane amount of room, and I think that if they decided they were going to get rid of something, it sounds crazy like if you were an executive to get rid of Rock and Roller Coaster, but if you're replacing it with a coaster, it would be so easy to take that launch area and just gut it because this won't need it. And where that launch area is, that's your land. You can just plop it right in. Mm -hmm. You're done. And you can get rid of the queue area now, and that's the entrance to your section. Thematically, it'd be weird next to the Tower of Terror, but I mean, I guess so is a roller coaster that's going to Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> In my mind, to me, that makes the most sense. Behind Star Wars Launch Bay, there is not a lot of room. There's not. I just don't know if it's going to fit there. Um, and the Muppets area, there might be enough room, but like people have said, it's such a fan favorite, and so many people love it, and they've done work for it. And It would, it would stink to get rid of the Muppets area there. It wouldn't surprise me if they knocked it down, but I just, I don't know. I really, in my mind, as soon as someone recommended Rock and Roller Coaster, I was like, to me, that actually makes the most sense. It's a quick replace. You get rid of one ride in exchange. You get to swap it out for that. If they wanted to, they could even switch out the um, Lightning McQueen Racing Academy and do that as the new uh, Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor and then have a ton of room now for Tomorrowland because we have Stitch sitting empty. If you also got rid of Ro Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, you have two big buildings now that have room that you could do something if you wanted to do a revitalization of Tomorrowland, you know, 10 years down the line. I'm very excited for the ride. I just did the new suspended coaster over at Busch Gardens, Tampa Bay, their Phoenix mm -hmm. Rising. And that's one of the most themed coasters that Busch Gardens has ever done. It's got onboard audio. It's got lighting effects. It's got a big screen. And it's just fun. It actually had a good amount of thrill without being scary. And I think that's what Monsters, Inc. could do really well. If they can have a bunch of these go back and forth and we're suspended, and I would love – it looked like it in the concept art. If Disney's going to basically have extra track and they're just sending um, – some of the doors through the track yeah. add to that. If they can do that, I think this is going to be a complete win. People love Monsters, Inc. Uh, I like the property a lot. So I think that there's great opportunity in that. And this seems like one of those no-brainer rides. I think it's going to be great. We'll have to see where it's going to go. But I'll tell you, I'll definitely be lining up day one for that coaster because it sounds like just such a fun concept. Yeah, it sounds super cool. And yeah, the extra track, if they have the extra track for the doors and mm -hmm. with – Mike and Sully hanging from the door as an animatronic. That would be, that'd be crazy if they just, oh, that would be super, super cool. Um, but yeah, I will certainly be there. I think this is a perfect addition and a, a typical family addition for, mm -hmm. I'm sure it won't have any loops or anything. So, like, all ages edition and a really fun ride. I like the whole that your elevator will be lifted up just like in the movie and then you'll just glide on down. Super cool. And those models looked amazing. Man, yeah, so they yeah Disney World, Disney World, Universal, and even out here, at Disneyland and Universal have some great, a great feature ahead. It's a great time to be a theme park fan. And stay tuned to everything you need to know info because they're gonna have everything you need to know about all these theme parks. And absolutely, the VI it's the what is it your show called on Fox Five VIP theme park theme park yeah, VIP. Orlando Parks VIP and the best part about that show is it's totally free to watch if you have a smart TV you just have to download the Fox local app and then you can switch your station to Orlando the show is on there or if you head to the Fox Thirty Five Orlando website you can type in Orlando Parks VIP and all the episodes are listed there as well oh that also really so anyone can watch it they're not anyone just can watch it yep. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, so definitely, yeah, I'll check that out. I'm going to go check it out. And um, there's plenty of – a couple of episodes already on there, one with Disney Drew Dude, who's been on the channel mm -hmm. here. Um, check it That's a fantastic one. I've seen some clips on that one of that one on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, please subscribe. More theme park updates. Stay tuned for Halloween Horror Nights content and much more. And, as always, have an epic day. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining, Theron. We had a great, very fun 